All right, for today, the most important lesson you will ever learn in Math 1. Really, really is. I know that sounds exaggerated, but it's not. This is the most important lesson you will ever learn, um, maybe in all of high school, because you use it throughout high school. So you will factor, especially this type of factoring, for the rest of your high school career. Um, and you might get frustrated with me today. I know that's frustrating. I know that you are, um, this seems like a lot. You're going to feel like there's a, a lot to this. And it does feel like a lot at first, but I promise you that the more you practice it, the better you'll get at this and the less time it'll take you. And then you'll start to figure out some tricks, some little things to do, but you can't, um, you can't do that if you don't know what's actually going on. So this is going to kind of bring everything together that we've been trying to do. What we call this here at um, AK is we call this factoring using the AC method. And the reason why we use the AC, we call it the AC method, is simply because um, it uses this idea of the very first step. How you begin shapes everything, okay? So to do so, we call it AC simply because we're going to use the A, which is right here, I'll label that, that's two, and the C, which is right here, we'll label that, that's five. We're gonna use those two letters, in this case, um, they're two and five, and then we're also gonna come back and eventually use B as well, okay? So it's very important, if you want to just take a quick second, I would, I would write down, okay, my A value is two, my C value is five, and my B value is 11, okay? Making sure you know what your A, B, and C are is gonna be crucial to this process. So step number one, you simply multiply A and C together. So two times five equals 10, all right? And now that we know what that number is, a lot of times people will call this ACT, because as soon as you have that number, that 10, you put it on top of a T chart, okay? So ACT, like the ACT test, it's really helpful to remember that. So we're gonna start with A times C and then you put it on top of a T chart, ACT. Once you've got your T chart there, the point of a T chart is to list all those factors. To list all the factors, these are numbers, right? These are numbers that multiply, numbers that multiply to, in this case, 10, right? Numbers that multiply to 10. So most of you are probably thinking two and five, and that's true, it is two and five to multiply to 10, but don't forget the one that you're not thinking of, negative two and negative five. Those are different, they both give us 10, but they're different factors, right? Um, or the most obvious ones that we never remember, one and 10, and or negative one and negative 10. Okay, so those are my factor pairs of 10. And here's what we now are going to do. The one we want, we're going to choose, we're gonna choose the pair here, we're gonna choose the pair that adds up to your B value. So it's super important, let's go back up and remember, what is B equal? B is equal to 11. Does two plus five equal 11? No, it doesn't. Two plus five doesn't equal, neither does negative two and negative five. But 1 plus 10 adds up to 11, right? So they were being multiplied. Don't get me wrong. 1 times 10 gives me 10. But if we were to add them, it would equal 11, right? So it's kind of this little dance we're doing where we're finding numbers that multiply to 10. But then we also want that those same two numbers to add to our, a different number, in this case, 11. It's our B value. So the pair we're choosing is 1 plus 10, because that equals 11. Now, I want to show you something, though, and it's really important to remember this at this stage in the game, that if we go back up to the B value, this was 11, right? But it was actually 11x, right? It was a, The term itself was 11x, which means the only way we get 11x is that this is 1x plus 10x. So those numbers are one and 10, but they're actually X terms, because one X plus 10 X gives me the 11 X that it originally was at the very top, okay? So deep breath, we're about halfway through. I wanna recap. 
We started out by doing a times c and then putting on the t chart. 2 times 5, 10. So then 10 on the t chart. AC method. 2 times 5, 10. 10 over the t chart. Factors of 10 were lots of different things, but we chose 1 in 10 because 1 in 10 added up to 11. All right. So we then think about 11. Well, really it was 11x. So that means it had to be a 1x plus 10x. Now here's the part where lazy people, lazy people, so look in the mirror if that's you, start to screw up. Because lazy people don't like to rewrite. But it is so important that we rewrite right now. And when we rewrite, we're going to keep the same first term and the same last term. I like to think of these as the hamburger buns. Right? If you go to a burger joint and you get a um, any type of burger you want, whether it's a, a regular hamburger, cheeseburger, turkey burger, tofu burger, black bean burger, bacon double decker burger, whatever, the same, the only thing that all those have in common are the buns. So those, that's the top and the bottom. That's the first and the last term. So our first and our last term stay the same. 2x squared plus 5, right? That 2x squared and that positive 5. So I'm going to write those guys right here. 2x squared, leave a bunch of space, plus 5. And <clears throat> keeping with the burger analogy, the only thing that's changing in all of those burgers are the terms in the middle, right? You're, you're changing out a turkey patty for a, a, a bacon or a hamburger patty, whatever it might be. Those are my two new terms. Then that's what we just found right here. These are my two new terms. Positive 1x plus 10x, right? With the whole point in finding those terms was to use them. So step four was to rewrite that polynomial. And do me a favor, let's just go ahead and um, write it in the next box. Once you're doing these problems for real, you won't have to rewrite so much, but just for the sake of our notes today. So 2x squared plus 1x, and you're going to see that I'm going to get a whole new color here for my, my next two terms, and you'll see why in just a second. Okay, so 2x squared plus 1x plus 10x plus 5, right? And what we do at this stage is we really, we want to factor out GCFs. We want to factor out a GCF. But there's no GCF that exists in every single one of those terms. There's nothing that, that all four of them have in common. So what we do instead is instead of doing all four, we split it down the middle. So I like to just draw a little squiggly line just to separate them, right? Just to separate them. Thinking of the, the red ones, the 2x squared plus 1x on one side, and then the positive 10x plus 5 on the other side. So by um, separating them down the middle, we now actually do have a GCF. If we look at these first two terms, we have a GCF there. Remember, GCFs are division. We're dividing, which is why I just drew my lines, right? We're dividing, and we're going to divide out whatever they have in common. So 2 and 1, nothing in common there, so just really a 1. If you want to write it, you can. But the x squared and the x has an x in common. Okay, so that's my GCF. We do the same thing on the right-hand side. 10x and 5, oh, they both have a factor of 5 in common, but no x. Okay, I'm going to give you a little hint here. Don't tell anybody. little hint is that this left-hand side will always have an x, always have an x, and this right-hand side will pretty much never have an x, okay? So you're looking for these two GCFs, and the little hint is that almost 99 times out of 100, the left-hand side is always going to have an x in my GCF, and the right-hand side won't, okay? So if we rewrite this now, if we rewrite this at, in GCF style, the um, GCFs come to the front, so we have a 1, oops, that's still in the highlighter. So we have a 1x out in the front of our parentheses, so 1x parentheses, and then positive 5. Notice that you divided out a positive 5, so you got to put that plus sign there, parentheses. So let's finish up the division. What is 2 divided by 1? Well, it's still 2 x squared divided by x is x. 1x divided by 1x is a positive 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. 
x is still there. He didn't get divided out. 5 divided by 5 is positive 1. Do you notice anything? Do you notice? This is so cool. What actually happened here is what was left behind is exactly the same, right? What was left behind was exactly the same. And that should happen every single time. It should. If it doesn't happen, you screwed up. Okay, if it doesn't happen, you, you something went wrong. So to get our final answer, to get our, our final answer, what I do is I think of these as a GCF binomial and a repeat binomial. So the GCF binomial in this case, our first binomial, are these guys, right? So they kind of can come down here. I'm going to cut through there. So a positive 1x and a positive 5. That's my GCF binomial. Basically, I take the two bin GCFs that I found. Let's get a different color there. The two GCFs that I found, and those create my first binomial. The second binomial is the repeat binomial. So they go side by side, another set of parentheses, and the repeat is, is the one that repeated itself, the one that's there twice. You only have to write it once though, right? It's there twice, but you only have to write it once. And guys, that's the answer. We just factored a trinomial and our answer are two binomials, x plus five times two x plus one. I know that sounds like a lot of work to get that, but that is the most important skill you will learn this whole semester. So you've got to learn it, especially because you will do it again and again and again in math two as well. So I really want to make sure that you're solid on that. A real quick recap. I know this video is a bit long. Start by identifying A, B, C. Once you know what your A, B, and C are, you're then going to multiply the A and the C together. And then once you've multiplied your A and your C together, you put that on the T chart. You then um, find the factors of, of that number. In this case, it was 10 that add up to B. So 1 plus 10 added up to 11. That's what we wanted. That was 1x plus 10x. That created a new polynomial with the same first term and last term, but different terms in the middle. And then we split it down the middle and we found our GCFs. The GCFs went out front. And what was left behind when we divided was exactly the same. And then we created two new binomials. One was composed of the GCFs, 1x and 5. And one was composed of that repeated binomial, 2x plus 1. And that's how you factor. So we have lots of time today to practice. That's what I'm hoping we'll spend the rest of our time on.